welcome to another episode of Coffee with Clover. Today I want to bring you interesting coffee and conversation and I'm very pleased to introduce to you a producer, a publisher and she's also one of 100 Canadian black accomplished women to look out for. Please help me welcome Miss Shelley Jarrett. Shelly, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah. I'm truly honored to be here. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've been, I'm so excited to come and do this interview today because when I look at your bio, it floored me. It just <laughs> kept growing and growing with all your accomplishments. Right. So um, you, your background is uh, social work and business. So that led you to start working with women in your community. Can you tell me yeah. more about that? Well, my uh, business background is going back over 12 years. I do have a social work background, always wanted to work with women, still working with women. And yeah, so I work mainly in women coming out of domestic violence situations. And over the years, this is pretty much what I've done. I've done uh, finance, financial services, always mm -hmm. putting women at the forefront and making sure that they're financially stable. And like I said, yeah, my journey has been 10 years. And over the years, I've also done, well, what happened in 2008, there was a recession and I left corporate. I oh. had no idea I would leave, but how long you were in corporate for? Oh, over 20 years. Okay, so right? In financial experience. services, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I left corporate and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I was encouraged to go and do a women's entrepreneurial course. The course was for like about well, four months in Oakville, Ontario. And that's what led me into having my own business. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, I, after I graduated, I formed an image consulting company. Mm -hmm. and How did that go? Oh, that was very well. And again, working with women, teaching them to dress for success in the workplace. That's interesting. Yeah, these were like women that were like stay at home moms or women that wanted to go back out into the workforce, just teaching them how to dress for that, put on that power suit. Are you still doing that? Well, in a way, but in a different way, because my journey has taken me in different avenues. Okay. But like I said, always women empowerment. That's always mm -hmm. on my heart and that's what I love to do. So I would do that and then I started getting a lot of following on social media mm -hmm. and I wanted to take that to another level. And so I thought, why don't I start a magazine, have no publishing background, wow. nothing. And I approached uh, my husband who is uh, in journalism and does writing and I said, uh, would you like to be my editor? I want to start a magazine. And he agreed, and the rest is history. Wow. <laughs> Ten years later, so we still have the magazine. That's SMJ Magazine. SMJ and you just, Magazine. Um, you just celebrated nine years. Yes. How we, was it? That was very well. We had a big party. We invited all our writers. All Some of our, our um, team is still with us over the nine years. And yeah, we had a big party. And just coming out of COVID, everybody was happy to see each other, like be together again. So that was very good. And um, yeah. So out of that, we had the magazine and what happened, here comes 2017 and the Me Too hashtag broke. And I'm thinking like, what is this Me Too? Okay, just to digress a little sure. bit before we talk about Me Too. For the SMJ, um, it's a lifestyle, right? Yeah, well, we cover all, we co it's image, lifestyle, business. And in image is like image consulting, how to do branding and so forth. But lifestyle is very broad, arts and entertainment, beauty and fashion, health mm -hmm. and wellness, faith and community. We cover because it's so broad, okay. right? And also we want to give women in the community who are doing extraordinary work, a platform to tell their business story. So the features so that's are on the mainly, business mainly side. for women, the features are mainly for no, women. No, it's a diverse a magazine, diverse like mm -hmm. all, all aspects of ordinary people doing mm -hmm. extraordinary things, but always that area where I profile women, future women that's mm -hmm. doing extraordinary, extraordinary work in the community. Is there any one person that stand out that you had featured in the magazine? Oh, wow. Gee, there's been like so many. Mm -hmm. I, I remember we covered uh, Chosan Chin. Mm -hmm. She had just um, won The Voice. Oh. And yeah, it was it was huge. She's Canadian. Yeah, yeah and she yeah. came to Canada because they were doing their uh, tour, and we I was third person in line to get a picture of her, and we did a feature on her, mm, and so wonderful. that that's and the, it went viral actually. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. that was like wow. 
Yeah, and that's give me a lot of encouragement and a lot so of... So you did some of the writing to also? To do it. Yes, I do some writing. Mainly we have other writers. I'm really the... Uh, I would say the CEO. I'm really the CEO and founder of the magazine. <laughs> you are wearing two hats right there yeah, for that project. And I always have a say in how the magazine is going to look and things like that. But the other team, they do their part. The graphic artist, my husband is the editor-in-chief. He really manages the magazine. Mm. I, I usually say I just show up and look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But yeah. And then after the magazine, you jump into the documentary. When, if, when is it that you have the initial thought, let, let me do a documentary? Oh, why? I had no thought of doing a documentary. But what happened, like I said, the, the Me Too broke in 2017. And when the Me Too hashtag broke, we knew the media focused on high profile women, uh, Caucasian women, women in the entertainment industry, in the political arena. And I knew they were not focusing on our community. And we knew that these things were happening in our community. Oh, no. And I wanted women to tell their story. So we featured uh, five women in the magazine that wanted to tell all their story, all forms of gender-based violence, like domestic violence, child molestation, harassment in the workplace, like any form of violence. and. To my amazement, when I read their stories, it pretty much broke my heart. And I said, you know, uh, we have to tell this story on a bigger platform. Were you reluctant on stepping out, asking women to tell their story based on the topic? Because some women may not want to speak and think it's an embarrassment. Yeah, well, no, actually, I just really got lucky. And the, the women wanted to tell their stories. And as we know, these are very sensitive Topics. Topics, yep. right? But they were ready to tell their story. And the way we uh, asked the questions, we structured the make questions, them make them comfortable, and they were able to tell their stories. And, and so we knew that this was happening in all cultures, you know, because violence is against all social economic spectrum and not just one culture or one community. So we wanted to capture the diverse women. So we got. Um, Four women from the, sh the story wanted to tell. One didn't want to do it because she was uh, had some issues with her father and she, they were just getting oh. back together and she didn't want to rock the boat. Right. So, we so in total you got eight women or seven Well, women? what had happened, we put out a casting call. Oh, interesting. Yes, and we were asking for women from all backgrounds if they have a, a domestic violence story or abuse if they want to talk and then yeah we interviewed them and that's how come we got eight women from the five major cultural backgrounds wow what was it like for them to start telling their story yes they volunteered to come out but what was it like i think a lot of it is because of my social work background like uh i i just listened and sometimes women just need you to listen right and not always want to give advice mm -hmm. so with that skill I had, I listened to their stories and they were comfortable. They came to my home, which is a comfortable environment. It's not like I met them in a coffee yeah. shop or something. Yeah. And so they felt comfortable and we just got really lucky that they wanted to tell their Congratulations story. Congratulations on that one. Thank How you. did it feel seeing your, seeing your production on film? Oh my gosh. I was like, it was like an out of body experience. Honestly, we got to the theater and I was like so proud of the work that I did because I was just got really lucky that I supported a friend uh, an actress a friend of mine in Toronto we were sponsors for her and that's where I met the the director because I knew it was a, a special person to direct this this film right I'm the producer on okay. the film but she directed the film and again the, the cast was also complete diverse cast mm. somebody from everywhere right, and so I, I had to track her down for four years four months actually because, because she was busy uh, because she didn't know me. I just met her in a, at an event, but I was brave enough to ask her. She was, I think, the director on the film that I went to support my friend. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, here's my opportunity to ask her because she's a director and I knew I wanted this documentary, but it wasn't any and every person I wanted to direct mm -hmm. it because it's very sensitive. So your right? timing was right. Yeah, I made a little bit of luck. <laughs> and so I just gathered the professionals around me, the cinematographer, everybody around me. Like I said, I'm the visionary, I'm the right. producer, but I know exactly what I want and how I want it to be and how I want to promote it. So all those factors came into play. So it was the, and to my amazement, it went on to win numerous awards. Mm. And 
And then COVID happened because that we we produced we did that in 2019, the end of 2019. In early 2020, we did some uh, additional edits, mm -hmm. and we were. This is my COVID story here. We were in Ottawa, right, mm -hmm. early uh, March, uh, just starting to take the documentary across Canada, and we were probably with the last people at the university that night because we screened it wow. there at the university. And when we drove back to Toronto, everything went into lockdown. What province you were at? Oh, in Ottawa, Ottawa. Carleton okay. University in okay. Ottawa. So yeah, everything went into lockdown. So, but then that you just said the name that demon came tried to stop us. But while we were in lockdown, a lot of us were inspired to do many more things, and that brought you to the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and, and the, the consulting, the business consulting. Well, what happens? So we're home now. We cannot do films. Right. But we did a lot of uh, work. Uh, with women because a lot of women were trapped at home with their abusers and can't get out and you know everybody's confused with this pandemic no, nobody know what's going on so we did a lot of co support counseling with women that didn't know really what to do so what came out of that is like economic abuse because mm -hmm. we, we know of financial abuse but a lot of women like an example of economic abuse is like your spouse stopping you from, or taking away, say, for example, your credit card and, and go and gamble and run up the credit card and think, live different things like that or stopping you from giving you that power so that you can spend your card or spend your money the way you want to, like putting some, you know, restrictions on that. So How did you reach out to them? Because we're all in lockdown. Uh, women were calling in because luckily the when I the, the, the company that hired us to... to uh, the organization to show the, the, the film in, in Ottawa you just took a liking to us and like what we were doing and so we connected with them and so the women because it, it's a, an organization that deals with women with abuse and stuff so we okay. just I just got involved in supporting the women and that. So it's a good thing you had a background of social work because that led you to to identify an area that's much needed for support during exactly, the lockdown. Exactly, because okay. that's always what I love to do. Like, I truly believe in women empowerment. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pivot, mm -hmm. right? So what I did, how I pivot online, e-commerce, and from the documentary, I had a few merchandise, like, you know, T-shirts and coffee mugs. And, and I expanded that yeah, into, great. like, notebooks for women. And I started, and I remember that I did that women's course years wow. ago 12 <laughs> years and i said and while we were home listening to all the government the people talking about and the news and all because there's nothing else to do right the, i i was inspired by what mary ing the minister of small business for women she said women are going to need new skills and different skills to navigate this new system that we're going to have to pivot mm -hmm. and i remembered i just got an inspiration oh i did this course i did this course like years ago I have my binder with all the courses and so what I did I converted those courses into video modules and so that's what I do now with women I do coaching about using entrepreneurship as an empowerment tool mm -hmm. so for women that are fleeing violence or women that want to start up their own businesses and that use an entrepreneurship because I know there's a lot of resources now if, if you want to be That's an entrepreneur there. yeah that pause was really it's a curse in some areas it's a blessing in other areas it's expanded yeah. out the way we think and what we can do yeah and yeah. a lot of more opportunities exist now that yeah. didn't exist before I know, COVID I know yeah. so that led you to your fantastic podcast how is that going yeah and so the, that's just an extension of the the film so I'm doing a major branding around What About Us. It's called What About Us. And it's like, I wanted to say, well, everybody's talking about all these high profile women. What about us in our community? So that's how that name <laughs> oh, came up. Oh, that's how the name came about. So yeah, I'm doing some branding around that. Did you explore that. other names before getting to that one? Uh, we did, but it just came so naturally. Mm -hmm. What about us? Because we were being overlooked. Okay. Right? So, and uh, while all of this was going on, in between, you have been receiving awards after awards. How many awards have you received? Oh my gosh, I've got quite a lot. Wow. Over 10. Wow. But That's... you know, it's nice to have awards, but also I feel that I've not touched the surface. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's just so much more work to be done and it's nice to be recognized for the work that I do in the community. But you have inspired, that's but, why you've gotten it. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy about it, but I feel still feel that I have not done much. There's so much more to do mm -hmm. and um, I'm grateful 
that my work is being out there and I'm just there to support women and help them through the different processes, yeah. So you're a wife, you're a mother, you're a businesswoman. Yes. How do you juggle so many hats? Wow, I just pray a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, um, it's a lot, but somehow I manage, you know, my husband, uh, he's very good we share the, the responsibilities like he, he takes on a lot of the magazine and the film company and so that gives me a chance to focus on my um entre entrepreneurship um, mm -hmm. area of my okay. work with women yeah mm -hmm. well it's good i just want to go back to the awards the latest award which is the latest award you've received yeah i just received an award actually i think the award uh event is tonight is okay. <laughs> yeah 100 uh, accomplished black women in canada mm -hmm. award so you're going to so be receiving one. it now or you have got i will award. be received that's my my latest award oh wow yeah so when are you going to celebrate all these wins it's a lot of wins it has been wins 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 right well i celebrate it every day just being alive and just being able to do the things that i do is a celebration not in even itself. a grand moment <laughs> well, we're planning a big uh, 10th year okay, for bash. the magazine. Next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. for the, so that would be grand. Yeah. Okay, so what's your next chapter after all that? Oh boy, there's so many stories to be told. Mm -hmm. So I, I really love storytelling. So there's quite a few projects on projects the table. Are, projects are brewing, yeah, I would say. Yeah, on the table. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. And a fun fact about you that other people don't know. Wow. Fun fact about me, that's interesting. Um, I love to tell stories. Okay. And that's really yes. that's what you're into. Yeah, right. and just really always get involved with the community. Right. Community development. That's important. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. What's the last thing you Googled? Oh boy. Because <laughs> you're always researching. Right? Always researching. Uh how to do Zoom effectively. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And <laughs> coffee or tea? Oh, tea. Tea? I'm a tea. Well, even though it's tea, I want to cheers to my coffee. Oh, cheers. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Okay. Thank I you. want to thank you so much, Shelly, for coming on and sharing your story. I am so impressed with what you're doing. And you do, looking at what you're doing, it encourages me, myself, to go on. Thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you so much for okay. having me. Okay. I'm happy to be here. Okay. And thank you all for tuning in and listening and watching. This has been Coffee with Clover, one-on-one, -on -one, in-depth conversation. See you next time.